Hey everybody, it's Michael. I've got a new video for you today. Today we're going to talk about rulers and I'm going to introduce you to the Wavit One and how to use it. And again, as always, if you enjoy this content, please like, subscribe, and get notified. And all this information can be found on my website, michaelquilts.com. Okay, as I mentioned in the intro, we're going to look at the Wavit One today. Okay, this is the newest ruler I have, and uh, it's the first in the Wave series. And um, it's got two waves, the gentle larger wave on the top, and then a little bit more turbulent down here, <laughs> more character, uh, smaller waves. <laughs> okay, uh, so I'm gonna show you how to stitch out both of these today, and then gives you some ideas of uh, how you can use the ruler in various ways. All right, here we go. Can you see that there? I hope you can. Okay, so we've got needle stop here where the arrow is and needle stop here. And um, we have this line right here, which is the stitching line. Then I have a half inch line below it. Um, and that's the same on both sides. Whichever way you, you use, you've got a stitching line so you know where you're going to be stitching and you can line this ruler up with uh, marked lines if you'd like. And then I have a half inch below there. All right, so um, I'm gonna place the ruler down. Now I have marked this fabric with disappearing ink, so uh, I'm not sure how long it'll last. <laughs> Let's hope it gets through filming. But I've basically marked it in two inch markings all the way um, across to where I'm gonna stop on this sample piece. All right, first thing we're gonna do is line up the line on my marked line and nestle the hopping foot right there where um, needle stop starts. And I'm just gonna start stitching very slow. Let's see, let me change my stitches per inch. I like to do 10, just my favorite. Some people like 11, 12, uh, 10's my favorite. Okay, and here we go. Okay, nice and slow. I've got my ruler base on and my ruler foot. Don't forget that. I'm walking my fingers, as you can see, trying to keep my reference line on the marked line. Okay, and now I'm at the end, so I stop here. I slide the ruler all the way over and nestle the hopping foot back into where needle stop says. Um, get this lined up with my reference line and continue. Nice and slow, walk the fingers as you go. You'll get faster, of course, as you use it more. Okay, stop when it stops. Okay, um, so I've just produced a really seamless line uh, where you can't tell where the ruler stopped and started. So it's got a nice, seamless, continuous wave and the main goal is to just do what we always do with rulers, which is you're pulling um, the machine towards you. So it, you're kind of what I always call kissing it, making sure your hopping foot kisses with the side of the ruler. Just a nice gentle pull while you're moving the machine the direction you need to go. Okay, so right now it's a gentle push towards me and the ruler and also moving. All right, so I'm at the end. Um, I can choose to either break thread and, and start all over on the other side, or um, we can go back the other direction. So let, let me grab a straight ruler. Now this side's, oops, this side's not gonna be perfect, but um, that's okay. I can see my next reference line. Uh, so I'm just gonna stitch up to it. It's right there. Okay, um, I'm gonna place the um, template back into where the hopping foot's nestled in and I'm gonna use my reference line for stitching that I can see it's, I know it's almost disappearing so if you can't see it, I apologize. Um, but uh, trust me, it's right there. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna go back. Same principles, I'm walking my fingers, I am pulling the machine towards me gently and moving towards the left and I stop there. So you see, we're creating a really beautiful wavy channel. 
So it can be a channel. It could be waves just all over the quilt. Um, I'll show you how I use it for feather spines. It can be used for scalloped borders. I'm stopping there. Okay, so um, this is a nice, beautiful, wavy design. And right now, it's even, meaning it's the same wave, two inches apart. So it creates a nice, even, consistent effect, which is one way to go. Um, and then I'll show you how you might uh, change it up different ways if you don't want that even effect and you just want kind of scattered wavy lines. I'm just going to create sort of a border here with straight line. I'm go I've gone up to the next one. Let's do one more to go across to see how pretty this pattern comes out. Okay, so same principles, nestling the hopping foot right there at needle stop. You can't go anywhere else. <laughs> and um, I've got my reference line all the way across. Okay, walking my fingers. Gentle kissing of the hopping foot and the ruler. Stopping at needle stop. You got this, it's easy. Um, not too much to to worry about there as long as you go nice and slow um, and keep the pressure on your the fingers closest to the hopping foot and the ruler base which is you know right here so that um, this doesn't flip up because this is a lengthy ruler it's 12 inches and it could go up if you if you're not if like keeping the pressure over here it's going to start flying up so you want the pressure closest to the hopping foot where you are sewing um towards the end sometimes i don't walk all the way over to the very end but i am aware of what's happening and i don't let the ruler fly up so see like right here i can leave my fingers where they are but as i get to the end i'm still cautious um of what's happening with the pressure okay so there um let's do one more so that we can go back and then look at the design that we created okay going back reference lines um when i first started quilting on the long arm. Um, I did a lot of t-shirt quilts. It's how I kind of got used to operating my machine. And um, while by doing that, I just got a little bit off because the line was so disappeared. <laughs> it had disappeared, I didn't see it right. While doing that, um, you know, I was doing some basic designs. I was doing a lot of just straight line quilting on them. Um, and then I, I started doing these alternating rows with the t-shirts and um, I did some wavy lines and uh, I it was it was probably um, that where I, I liked oh okay there's different things you can do with these waves sure you can freehand wavy lines but if you want some consistency uh, a template is the way to go Okay, there. Can you see that? Hopefully you can. Let me um, get my edge here. There, so you can see uh, the nice wavy pattern all the way across. Okay, so there's that one. Um, let's stitch out the other side. We'll do it the same way while my lines are still visible. They're almost gone. <laughs> I really do like the disappearing ink 
I um I don't know what's wrong with me, but sometimes my blue mark to be gone. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm doing sorry. I'm doing the same thing here. It's just there's more waves to it, so I'm going to go a little bit slower. Um, the blue marks be gone. Sometimes I have trouble getting it out. I know it's supposed to be the best thing ever. Um, sometimes it doesn't come out for me, and so I'm careful um, about what I use. And um, I recommend a test every time. Oops, I just got off. Did you see that? Um, sometimes if you're not paying attention, like, and I was talking, I thought, I'm not sure what I'm going to say next. Um, <laughs> I went away from the ruler. I let it go away. So, um, <laughs> it happens. Um, don't let it happen to you <laughs> if you can help it. So I've got to get myself back on track here. Uh, I'm going to adjust it a little bit. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, I wasn't um, letting the ruler kiss with my hopping foot. Uh, anyway, marking. Yeah, I, lately um, I really love the air erasables and chalk. Uh, I've been enjoying chalk. But it all depends on the fabric, really. Doing the test. Okay, so we're going back. This side would make such pretty flowery vines that you could put some embellishment on. As soon as we stitch out a couple more rows, I'm going to show you some things that we could do with it. Anyway, I just think um, these are beautiful. And stopping there, sliding over, reference line. Walk your fingers. Now, if your machine doesn't like to stitch to the left, <laughs> then just start every time, start a new row every time. I'm really lucky. Um, my Nova will stitch anywhere I want. Now, it depends on the thread I'm using, to be honest with you, though. I will be honest about that. Um, but as long as I've got good tension, I'm using thread that I can depend on, that I know how it works. Like this combination today is I have glide thread in the top, um, and then I have glide 60 in the bobbin. Um, but even if, if I was using bottom line or whatever, I just tend to like my thicker thread in the top and my thinner thread in the bottom. I used to be a quilter that used the exact same thread in the top and the bottom. And that is beautiful too. Um, but uh, the last year or so, I tend to get the best results out of a 40 on the top and 60 in the bottom. So that's what I have today. And it's what my machine, who I named Morris. Hi, Denise, if you're watching. <laughs> Morris. Uh, and that is for my favorite designer, William Morris. Um, Morris likes that combination, and so I give Morris what he likes. <laughs> but I, I use other threads too. It's just uh, I have to finagle with them a little bit sometimes. Okay, so uh, should we get one more in there? I don't have a reference line up there, but uh, now I guess we'll just stop right there. Um, now let's put one more. Getting real close to the edge of my quilt, but that is okay. All right. Um, I don't think you need me to tell you what I'm doing. 
I think you got the idea. Keeping the line underneath. If if you're using reference lines, in a little bit I'll show you just some freehand. Um, here we go. So I will say, just keeping mindful of that kissing concept. Um, not letting your hopping foot get away from this from the ruler is important when you've got so many little little waves there okay so we've done the waves let me show you okay so here's what we've got uh, let me turn off funny how turning off the light sometimes gives you better sight at least you can see the texture here there all right, so um, now what I want to do is um, just show you how cool it can be to um, create some extra channels. Okay, um, I'm going to stitch about a half inch up from the first line to create a channel. You can mark this ahead of time if you want. Or you could sort of eyeball it, but do the same thing you just did before. It's just a different, um, a different line that you're you're using. You're using the same ruler. The I mean, the ruler the exactly the same way as you started. <clears throat> but um, you know, if you want to play a little bit with spacing and what you could do so what I wanted to do with that was just um, create a channel um, and I'm gonna put a fill in it this time it's going to be circles It could be anything. <clears throat> but I kind of wanted to see how circles would look in this sample. And maybe you're doing it all over with, you know, creating channels with this and certain channels have this circle design and then you've got rows without and then you go back to it or you alternate with some other fills if you like well you can see mine are organic remember my circles aren't perfect <clears throat> Okay, so there's your filled channel, if you could see that. Okay, so um, now I'm starting in the middle of the ruler with this center vertical line, and I'm putting it um, where I had started here before. Okay, and so um, I'm giving myself a reference line down here, and uh, I'm gonna create pods. So it's just offsetting the ruler. So once I get the first one started, then I can just go back to normal and stitch just like before. Just keep your eye on your, your lines. Stop it, needle stop. Move it down just like before. Walk your fingers. Hop and foot and ruler kiss, all the basics that you already know. And we'll finish it out. Okay, and that would be my side. Um, and now I'm going to uh, take it down about three quarters of an inch. Oh, got to keep it this way. I'm 
taking it down about three quarters of an inch and um, I'm putting <clears throat> the center line again on this side where I started before and I'm going to go back so again I'm creating this channel on the outside stopping it needle stop shifting it over and here we go segment. Okay, so um, I've just created this pod. Um, and let's say I want to fill those with something else, um, which maybe we're going to do, let's just say we do wishbones. And of course they get much bigger in the center. You could space it however you like. You could put anything you want in here. You could put swirls, you could put straight lines, whatever. I'll kind of do a little ziggy zaggy here. Uh, I'll just keep um, keep going with, with wish, <laughs> keep going with wishbones to keep it somewhat consistent so I can use this piece as a sample That's what you don't want to do. Um, if this were someone's quilt, I'd rip that out. <clears throat> but it's my sample, and I think I can disguise it when I put some circles in that channel. If I can keep them in the channel, I am going right to left, which isn't my favorite. But when it has to be done, I can do it. Remember, we talked about which uh, the machines, if they like to stitch to the left or not. They didn't ask you if you like to stitch to the left or not. Most of us like to stitch from left to right. Okay, so I'm putting circles in this channel. So, just like with everything, it's a combination of rulers and templates with free motion that I think are the most exciting. Okay, so we've created pods. I think that looks good. Okay, so there is our filled pod, or pods, um, <clears throat> which I think would be beautiful over a quilt, um, just using the wave template and some fills. Okay, um, all right, let's go on to um, spines. Okay, this time let's use the larger side and create a stem or a spine for feathers. So I'm pretending like this is a border and I'm just going to stitch down like we did before. Now I'm going vertical, going down the needle stop. I'm actually using the edge here as a guide with one of my lines here. 
Okay, so let's just finish this stem. I'll go down until I can't go any further. So this has just produced a beautiful curved line that's consistent that can act as a spine for for your feathers or um, other other designs too, florals, uh, flowers, and and other things that a spine or a stem would be good for. All right, um, do I want to go on both sides and quilt it all at once? All right, we'll try. <laughs> okay, so that's gonna be my first fat feather. <laughs> I said I was going to quilt on both sides, but I didn't, so here we go. Okay, so I'm just using the wave as my guide. You know how I do my feathers, I think, if you've seen me. Um, I split the difference, meaning I come when I finish the feather, I come up and I split the difference here on that V and go out, go out, and then I come back in all the way down the spine. I'm going to split the difference here, go up. Back down into the spine, and do another one on this side. Now, I'm not doing um, these perfect, and I'm not using the space like I usually do. Or I'm like, I'll show you when I get to the widest point. Um, and I'm sure you've seen some designs where you can add in some extra feathers and fill in that space a little bit better. But this, just, um, this isn't about feathers. This is really more about the spine and how pretty it is uh, with its beautiful curved shape. Okay, I'm gonna use the smaller side. a wavier line. Just going down this, which could represent a border or sashing. I didn't mark it. I'm just going freehand here. Okay, so um, at this point, um, things are probably just a little bit smaller. Or let's let's see what else we could do. Um, yeah. We could do some leaves. got a little bit off of the stem there and now it's starting to look a little messy
but when you do it, you won't be <laughs> messy like me. I'm out of reach here. I'm not at a comfortable angle where I'm sewing, but uh, that's my excuse for today. <laughs> okay, so um, this looks like a lot of thread buildup um, because of the contrasting thread. But if it's matching, it shouldn't be too bad. Can you see it there? Okay, one more. I'm gonna use the small side again. And just create a nice stem. And we'll just do tiny feathers on this one. I'm going to do it on just one side. Oops. So we want to go back down the stem. We're going to go right over the line or close to it. I'm not too concerned when it's organic and it's the feathers and flowers, but yeah, we got pretty close. Okay, so there you've got um, big feathers, little leaves, and little feathers. <laughs> well, for the rest of the footage that I filmed, it's really just me playing um, and using the larger side of the template to um, create some waves in the border of this sample that I stitched out for you that I will take around with me and teach with. So um, I hope you've enjoyed the Wave It one and have some ideas for what you can do with it um, besides just wavy lines, but just wavy lines are fantastic. Here's what the sample piece looked like in the end. And um, anyway, it's available right now in the shop, michaelquilts.com. And I hope everyone is doing well, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>